We're going to be going over a deep analytical dive on a 13-unit apartment building. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Garrett, what is up, my man? Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Nails Show. Welcome to everybody else out there who's watching this uh, after I gave it to Garrett when I publicly posted on Holdwise TV, right? That's what we do, right? This is how it works when you work with me, okay? We make you personalized videos based upon your wants, your needs, your goals, help you build, start, grow, maintain your real estate portfolio. And Garrett, uh, you and I, we've done some stuff in the past, and you recently, you just reached out to me, and you wanted to uh, have me make you two videos uh, based upon a new set of criteria, right? And uh, what you have is you're looking to get uh, something that's five units or more, C-class or better, and your budget is going to be capped at a million dollars. So what I'm doing today, my whole day is focused on you, brother. I'm going to make you three videos, actually. I'm not going to make you two. Reason I'm going to make you three is because uh, the inventory is scarce, the inventory is tight, and there is not going to be any building that checks off of all three of those boxes for you, right? Your three checks, million dollar budget, C grade area, minimum five units, right? That's uh, what you're trying to do. So no property is going to hit all that for you. So I found you three properties that are all going to be very close to it, and you could tell me which one you'd like to pursue, if any, but I can't sell you what doesn't exist, okay? So these are the three things, and you may have to make a concession somewhere, but it's going to be up to you where you want to make that concession. So the first building is this nice 13-unit apartment building that I analyzed for a previous client, and that deal didn't go through. So first, I want to take you to that financial footage, the financial analysis. I'm going to take you to that footage now. 1385 Cranford Avenue, Lakewood, Ohio, 44107. This is a 13-unit apartment building listed at $1,250,000. Now, of all the neighborhoods, right, uh, this is by far going to be the best, right? The 30, I think it was 36 unit you sent me, that was at Cleveland Heights. Decent neighborhood, uh, but it's, you know, kind of on the outskirts of Cleveland Heights where it's probably, you know, on the lower end of the quality standards in Cleveland Heights. The other one, so we'll count that as like a high C, low B neighborhood. The other one uh, was a C, just a C class neighborhood in Cleveland. And then this one, this is Lakewood. This is what I would consider probably to be an A neighborhood, really. Like probably the east side of Lakewood starts off at like a B and then it like, you know, progresses into an A as, as you go further west. Uh, but Lakewood, of all those neighborhoods, you're going to get the highest quality tenants. Lakewood is uh, an incredibly desirable place. A lot of people love the nightlife and everything like that over there. And the building itself appears to be in the best condition, right? So let's take a look at what the listing agent said. Of course, they got a major, uh, a major, major... Uh, well done right up here because they actually purchased it uh, the last time they purchased it which is this listing here they purchased it for three hundred and seventy thousand dollars back in 2017 okay and they have done a ton of work to this sucker since then right so this is kind of like a flip project for them right so with what we have here we got like a pretty much a fully renovated building right in the heart of Lakewood, comprised of 13 apartments with an opportunity con to convert additional unit 14 uh, into a 14th apartment uh, or an office. I don't see any need for you to have an office. You wouldn't need on-site management uh, for a building of this size. If you wanted to make it a, a small unit, you possibly could, but you got to deal with like zoning, and it's kind of a lot of BS, so like I really wouldn't put any weight into that additional space right i don't think it has value to you as an office and it's probably gonna be cost prohibitive just dealing with the red tape of the city uh to make a very very small 14th unit so don't think about that like they, obviously they started their write up off with that but i don't really consider that to be of serious value i want you to completely analyze this as a 13 unit apartment building 
offering a uniquely vintage feel with completely renovated units for a contemporary style of living. Boasting high ceilings, plenty of windows, abundant closets, all stainless steel appliances, refrigerator, range, dishwasher, microwave. These beautifully tiled bathrooms offer a walk-in shower with full height sliding glass storage. Each suite is equipped with its own furnace and central air conditioning, allowing you total climate control. Keeping you comfortable all year round, added amenities include hardwood floors, ceiling fans, cable hookups, secure entrance, 24-hour emergency maintenance service, and more. Uh, fuck, dude, they wrote a lot of shit, man. I'm getting tired, Ben. Give me a second. Let me squeeze this over here. Let me take a sip of water. All right, uh, 24-hour emergency maintenance and more. These brand-new spacious one-bedroom suites have been completely renovated while maintaining the charm and architecture of its era while providing for every amenity you need and want. Refinished hardwood flooring throughout living areas, luxury vinyl flank flooring in kitchen and bath, brand new double pane thermal insulated windows with built-in screens, LED lighting, central air conditioning, new 100 app, grounded electric service, Decor switches and outlets, ceiling fans, new plumbing, new electrical, new on-premises laundry facility. Monthly, blah, 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 blah. monthly rents include sewer, water, and trash pickup with easy access to Route 2 and I-90. Cranford Apartments is a great place. Many in Lakewood can call home. All right, let me take another sip of water. Jesus Christ. Now, obviously, uh, the person who wrote that, right, they work for the seller. They're trying to, you know, pitch the building and, you know, there's just like a, whole, like a whole lot of adjectives in there, right? Uh, but essentially, the moral of the story, let me just cliff note version that massive paragraph for you, right? The the building, purchased in 2017, 370 or something like that, right? All jacked up back then. Over the last three years, you've had a professional operator, it appears, come in, totally re redo the whole building, right? We got a fully occupied rent roll, okay? We have the big stuff taken care of. We got them taken care of. We saw the electrical, the plumbing, the whole nine, right? So they've totally renovated this building, put it to you in a very turnkey type position, right? Which is what I think you want, right? You're just trying to invest your 1031k funds and you want it to be simple, right? This is uh, another write-up, another uh, you know memorandum that they utilize showing you you know the proximity of where it's located and here's what some of the units look like you know just very nice elegant professionally looking done type thing right you got the nice tiles around the showers you got the modern looking fixtures which is the stuff you want especially in a place like lakewood right you got to attract like the millennial types right nice kitchens right just modern look you know nice clean look you got the subway tile you know i mean they they wrote all that stuff with all those crazy adjectives in there yeah it's nice right big ticket items right like this hot water tank massive hot water tank that's clearly new electric new nice clean laundry area for these folks there you got your coin operated laundry for all your tenants which by the way just so you know highly recommend getting rid of the coins and going to the coin list the day we took our portfolio and went to coin list uh, our lives became so much easier uh, it's just it's a pain in the ass actually dealing with the physical coins now as i said dude they did it all for you right you got 13 units here fully occupied right bringing in 10,505 and then they're showing you the security deposits those of course will transfer over to you everybody is on a lengthy lease you got one tenant here on a month to month as far as all the rents go those are definitely market rents for lakewood so you know, some people, they're like, oh, is there upside, this or that? Like, they've already, you know, handled all the, re uh, you know, the repositioning of this asset, right? Like, this, what you see, that's what you're going to get, right? Don't think that there's, like, a way we could increase these rents. They did a bang-up job. Everything looks good. So, like, this building is performing about as optimally as it could, right? And then cruising down here, they have actually provided us uh, with their actual financials. Now, they only gave it to us um, from January 
2019 through December 2019, which I assume this is all they're going to make available because, remember, they bought it in 2017 as a repositioning product, right? So most folks don't provide those financials, nor would financials from the beginning of when they purchased this asset be applicable to what we're trying to do? It's irrelevant, right? They they bought it as a shit show, okay? They, they bought it as something that totally needed to be converted and, and redone, right? So whatever the heck was going on with it in 2017 doesn't really matter. This is what you can anticipate. And I, I combed through these numbers, and it all looks, uh, you know, pretty good to me, right? Like, it looks fairly accurate. If you watch my other videos when I, when I run the numbers on these and... You know, I give you your estimated expenses. These are actual expenses, which would more or less fall in line with what I normally give you guys for reasonable estimates, right? Like those things I give you are reasonable estimates that reflect, you know, actual numbers that look like this. So this is a, a very nice snapshot of what you can reasonably expect. And then their NOI for the year was $65,818.37, which I think is totally uh, feasible. Just to uh, show you guys some various ways like people do things, just if you're curious too, like uh, on this, right, with their repairs, they have their repair line items, which is up here, okay? But then as far as their capital expenditures, they have those down here. When I do my capital expenditures, I'm really just thinking about the bigger stuff. Uh, it looks like based upon some of the charges, like the seven here, the six here, I'm thinking perhaps they are considering unit turnovers to be in the capital expenditure line item. That's just how they do their accounting, whereas I would normally put them up in the repairs. But it all kind of is penciling out the same. Because, again, I believe a $65,000 NOI is pretty reasonable, pretty accurate. No reason for me to believe that these numbers are fictitious or fraudulent. Nothing about this uh, memorandum is out of the norm or leads me to believe anything is unrealistic, right? And I know the neighborhood is really, really great. And you're going to get a nice solid investment. So if I'm going for the long term, trying to move my 1031 money into an asset, this would be the asset I choose uh, over all three of these. This is my personal favorite. The other two are not, in my opinion, bad deals. Um, but I think if I had my choice, if I can get our target price on any one of the three properties, I would pick this one. This would be the one I'd want to own the most long term. However, it's important that we do all three because I don't know uh, if we'll be able to get any of them done because all three of these sellers have one thing in common. They are asking too much goddamn money. In my opinion, $1,250,000 is too much for this asset. What I would like to see you do, I would like to start the bidding at $900,000. If you were to pick it up at $900,000, in my opinion, that would be ideal. That would be about 69000 a unit. I don't necessarily think we can get them to come down $350,000. So what I believe will ultimately happen is I believe we'll start at nine hundred k, and I believe we'll probably be able to close it if we can get it closed at a million. I would not want to see you pay more than a million. At a million dollars, it puts it at about a 6.6 .6 cap, which is, in my opinion, the most you should spend on this particular property. Again, nothing bad about the property. Love the renovation. It's like literally set up perfect for a guy doing a 1031 but i just think it's overpriced by two hundred fifty thousand dollars. i don't want to see overpay so i would recommend we start the bidding at 900k and we max out that should be our ceiling our walk away point should be a mil if we got to pay more than a million I, I i think you're you're on the brink of overpaying there welcome back garrett so as i said before i sent you that footage right uh, that deal did not work out with that particular client. And this is where this particular property is going to miss uh, one, one of your, uh, your, your three goals here, right? Five units or more? Yes, we have 13 units. So we check that box. C grade neighborhood or better? Yes, this is a freaking awesome neighborhood, of course. So we check that box. The third thing, though, price. 1.25 million, right? You're capped at a million. Now, obviously, when dealing with him, I told him a million dollars should be your walk away point. I think it's what it's worth. I think it's worth about a million. You, you pay any more than a million, you're overpaying. 
Are you a lender? If so, Holton Wise is looking to partner with you. If you're licensed in all 50 states, go to HoltonWise.com. Click the digital media tab to advertise on Holton Wise TV today. Uh, so me and him, we submitted an offer to the seller, and we held tight. We held tight at a million dollars, okay? And the seller declined our offer, and he chose not to go uh, above that offer in any way, right? And uh, in my personal opinion, I, I think, you know, paying over a million bucks, you're probably overpaying a little bit. You're probably uh, paying a premium. But these are the three closest buildings. So... I've given you my thoughts on the numbers. It's up to you. Do you want to try to stretch things uh, and extend beyond that million-dollar price point, right? We did not explore anything above a million, right? We just capped it at a million, and then they said no deal, so we walked, right? So is it worth it to you to try to stretch things and make them a million fifty thousand dollar offer, a million seventy-five thousand dollar offer, a one point one million dollar offer? I don't know. That's up to you, right? It's your money. It's your business. I can only give you my opinions. So this is why I wanted to make sure I did three videos for you today instead of just two, right? Because every one of these properties is going to come uh, with a little something that doesn't hit all your boxes. So this is video one of three. I'm about to film the next videos for you right now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.